dog. So today we're going to do some of the muscles originating from the sternum and then some extrinsic muscles of the forelimb. So last lab we looked at brachiocephalicus, which is here, and today we're going to start with sternocephalicus. So you're moving to the sternum on the midline, ventral midline. Sternocephalicus is a muscle that runs from the sternum to the head, and it has two separate parts. So here, they're kind of hard to separate sometimes, but this is the occipital part here. And then mastoid part is here, kind of underneath that jugular vein. So sternocephalicus, there. Once you isolate that, you're going to transect sternocephalicus about two centimeters away from the sternum and reflect it up towards the head. So hopefully that'll stay up there. And then we can look at our sternohyoideus and sternothyroidus muscles. So they have a common origin coming from the sternum. But sternohyoideus is going to separate here, go up to the hyoid apparatus, sternohyoideus. And then a little more laterally, you'll separate out sternothyroidus, which is going to be this muscle here that goes up to the thyroid cartilage. So sternothyroidus. Common origin here from the sternum, but sternohyoideus goes, as we say, sternohyoideus goes high, so it goes higher up into the head. Sternothyroidus goes laterally, so it goes over here. All right, so you don't have to transect those, you can leave them intact. Now we'll move on to some of the extrinsic muscles in the limb. We're also going to look at some lymph nodes and some of the fascia. So you reflected your brachiocephalicus in the last lab, and here you can actually see my superficial cervical lymph node right there. And this is a muscle we're going to identify very shortly, omotransversarius, and usually the lymph nodes live right underneath that. So superficial cervical lymph node should be right there. And then if you move back down towards your sterno muscles that you just did, you're going to look here in the neck and find this deep fascia of the neck. And in that fascia, this white uh, fascial area, you're gonna find the carotid sheath. So you're going to pull that out of there and that will be this right here. So the carotid sheath will have your carotid artery and you also have your vagosympathetic nerve trunk in there. So that will be in what's called the carotid sheath. So it's just a sheet of fascia that goes around the carotid. But that's in the deep fascia of the neck. All right, on the dorsal midline, we have the median raphe of the neck. It's a little bit hard to appreciate, but if you think of the midline, the dorsal midline here, you have both sides of muscles coming together. So you have left side and right side coming together, making this line, the white line along the back of the neck. So that's the median raphe of the neck. All right, as long as we're back there, we're going to identify the trapezius. So trapezius is this kind of triangular shaped muscle here. It's been cut for this lab, which you are also going to do. So you're going to identify there's two parts. There's a cervical part and the thoracic part. So cervical part is attaching to cervical vertebrae. Thoracic is thoracic vertebrae. And then you're going to make an arching cut. So beginning at the cranial portion, making an arching cut all the way along to the caudal aspect of that trapezius muscle. And then you'll reflect those pieces. So then underneath trapezius, you will also see rhomboideus. And that will have three parts. So rhomboideus is going to have a capitis, which is kind of a strap going up this way. So this is rhomboideus capitis. And then cervicis, again going to cervical vertebrae. And then thoracis, here where the pin is, is going to be going to thoracic vertebrae. So the whole thing is rhomboideus muscle. Thoracis here, cervicis here, capitis, little strap going towards the head. You're also going to cut rhomboideus. So you'll make a cut through all of those different parts. And capitis, I usually try and leave a little bit longer so I can identify it here. So you have a stump on both sides. And then reflect the rhomboideus muscle. Like that. All right. Then we will come back to this side. And we'll look at that omotransversarius muscle that I had mentioned that we saw going over the lymph node here. So this is your omotransversarius, omo meaning shoulder. So we start at the shoulder and go up towards the head. So omotransversarius, and you're gonna cut that right in the middle and then reflect 
that stump here and then leave a stump here to identify later and just reflect those pieces. Okay, then we have latissimus dorsi. So latissimus dorsi is going to be the big muscle coming up from the caudal aspect of the forelimb. So you're coming up from behind, so it kind of inserts underneath in the axilla and comes up towards the back. So this is all latissimus dorsi. So what you want to do, here's the pin, I'll take the pin out, it's holding it there, but you're going to make a cut, just caudal to the forelimb. So once you identify latissimus dorsi, kind of identify its borders, you're going to cut it right next to the forelimb, just caudal to it, and then lift that up also. So reflect that towards the midline of the back. And now if I flip this arm forward, oops, you can see the serratus ventralis. Mine has actually already been transected, which you will do in your lab also. You'll transect serratus ventralis away from the limb, so you'll peel the limb up. But here you have serratus ventralis, and you have a cervicis and a thoracis. So cervicis would be here, and thoracis would be here. So thoracis, cervicis. So for making that cut, your limb will be like this, and you're going to lift up. You've already transected your pectorals and your other extrinsic muscles, so you'll lift it up like this, and you'll see serratus ventralis eventually. And you're actually going to continue to lift and then just make a cut along that scapula and lift the forelimb up and off and actually remove it from the body so that you have your forelimb separated from the rest of the body. The last thing on the list is the thoracolumbar deep fascia. So if we can, maybe you want to come around to this side, but the thoracolumbar deep fascia is basically just this sheet of fascia coming along here. So you'll see kind of a whitish sheet of fascia there, and that's thoracolumbar deep fascia. That should be it for lab two.